I've ever been reading an AI paper and in the formulas you see a bunch of weird symbols that you have absolutely no clue what they freaking mean. Like what does this triangle mean? And this kind of looks like a derivative but why is there a vector at the bottom? And why does this third triangle have a another vector on it? These all come down to the fundamental algorithm of the gradient descent. You've heard this everywhere, you've seen this everywhere, you know what we're talking about. The gradient descent algorithm is actually Probably one of my favorite applications of multivariable calculus. And you don't need to know any multivariable calculus coming in. I'll, I'll explain everything you need to know. Just make sure you know what a derivative is. However, these symbols help us understand and get to the heart of machine learning and how like these systems actually learn. Like what does learning mean? Well, we'll see in a second. So any AI algorithm is going to have a bunch of parameters we want to optimize. That's, that's what learning is. It's optimizing some parameters. So for linear regression, for example, we want to optimize this M right here. And in the case of, let's say, one neuron of a neural network in the, in the weights between them, we want to optimize all these weights right here. So the point is we have a bunch of parameters we want to optimize. We have a bunch of parameters, let's say theta 1, theta 2, theta 0. Well, we just have a list of them right here. And this is kind of how they work in the computer, where theta exists in its real number and all that stuff. So why don't we just package them up into a nice vector, where each parameter or part of the vector relates to a parameter theta of the model. Since we're going to be in n space or hyperdimensional space, we're going to have a lot of thetas. So this is going to be a column vector or just any vector. It's just a vector at all. And it's going to organize our thetas like so. So essentially, we want to optimize all the parameters of this theta vector right here. And the parameters are going to depend on, obviously, what type of machine learning algorithm you use, how many inputs, etc. So, so in our gradient descent, how this is going to work is we're going to choose, let's say, one of those theta, the one theta of that vector of theta. Let's say, I don't know, the the nth theta. And what this is going to be equal to in our gradient descent algorithm, it's going to be equal to the previous one. And then we're going to subtract from it. Uh, we're going to subtract from it some constant alpha. Alpha, I'll show you a concrete example later, but it represents the learning rate. This is really important. And I'll, it's essentially the rate at which we want to optimize or the rate we which want to change it. But it's going to be alpha times the partial derivative of our cost function. And you might be thinking, well, what the heck is this cost function? I'll explain to you in a second. So it's our cost function if we were to input in theta with respect to our theta vector. We want to, essentially, we want to repeat this equation until it converges. So remember, this theta right here is our learning rate, learning rate. And as you can see here, it's kind of a, a multiple of how much we want to change our vector. So for example, if we have a really, really high learning rate, then it's going to try to optimize very, very quickly. However, there's a problem with that and that if it optimizes too quickly, it might not get to the solution. However, if the learning rate's too low, it might optimize too slowly. And I'm going to show you a graphic intuition of this, but okay. But wh what is this cost function right here? What, what, what the heck is this? Our cost function where we input theta is going to be essentially a measurement of our error. An error can come in a few different ways. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use the uh, the mean squared error. So it's going to be the average of the uh, yes our actual y values, and then from here we're going to subtract it from the we're actually going to subtract it from the uh, the theta vector dotted with our input features x. And I know I didn't talk about our x in our x vector, but x vector is essentially just the inputs to our machine learning algorithm. 
So it's the difference between the predicted and the, act, the actual and the predicted squared. And this is just one example, but in the case of linear regression, it's actually better to do root mean squared. Or another way we could do this is just mean absolute error. But I'm just going to show you how to do this. So if you remember back to that original equation, we have the derivative of this cost with respect to theta. What is so what is this derivative of the cost? The cost with respect to theta, or with respect to the vector. Now this has a special name for it called the directional derivative, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So uh, for those of you who don't know multivariable calculus, you the way you take the derivative of this with respect to theta is you consider x and y in this case to be constant. So where it's kind of like you're at the mountain and you're facing one direction. What is the slope of the direction I am now facing? That's kind of that example, while the other directions are uh, kept constant. So if you remember the chain rule, we take this two and we want to output this here. So this actually becomes two over m. This actually becomes two over m. Our uh, sum doesn't, doesn't really change you can't really take the derivative of a sum. And then it's going to be, the inside is going to stay the same, so y minus this business right here, except it's not going to be a square. And then if you remember with respect to theta, we're, it's just going to be, at the end, we're going to multiply it by the x vector. And now back to the actual gradient descent algorithm. So. Uh, this is essentially what it is. So we solved for, remember, the partial, this right here is the partial derivative of our cost function with respect to our theta vector. And what this is going to do is for every theta vector, every per every value in the theta vector, so if you remember we have theta naught, theta 1, theta 2 in the column vector, and so on. So it could be hundreds of different theta. So for every theta, we're going to compute its change based on this formula. So using the learning rate times the gradient, the derivative of the cost with respect to theta. And this kind of just tells you, if we nudge theta in one direction or another, how is the cost going to be affected? That's all this is really saying. However, uh, you know, however, the computer scientist in me uh, looks at this in one in a different way than the mathematician. So we're essentially going through every different theta. We're going through it linearly for every theta. And that kind of has a O of n runtime, no, runtime, no, O of n time complexity. However, I feel like there could be a better way to do this, don't you think? Instead of having to go through every different theta, how about we just do all of the thetas at once for each learning step? So for n uh, for n thetas, it's going to do this at every learning step. Couldn't we do something where we have one, where it computes the whole thing for every learning step? So again, if we have our column of thetas, wouldn't it be nice if we just computed the partial derivatives of every single theta at once? And this is where the gradient comes in from the beginning of the video. So it would actually be the gradient of the cost function, the cost function of theta, the cost function of theta with respect to theta. And this grade, in this triangle represents the gradient vector. This whole thing is actually the gradient vector. This whole thing is actually the gradient vector. And it makes sense because we can't, we won't, if we're going to change a vector, we need to subtract, add or subtract it by another vector. This can't be a scalar because we can't subtract a vector from a scalar, we need to subtract a vector from a vector. To better illustrate this, let's for example say that our cost function, let's say that it it's represented by this 3D graph where uh, x and y, the x and y axes in this case, so this red axis could be one theta parameter, this green axis could be another theta parameter where theta can be positive or negative. And this 
z-axis is going to represent the cost. So if we initialize our thetas to be, like say, up here, what our goal is to then do is move in the direction that allows us to find a local minimum, and ideally we would be a global minimum. And you can think of it as like you have a ball on top, you have a ball on the hill here, which way is the ball going to hit roll downhill? It's going to roll like that. And this gradient actually, with the negative sign right here, tells us exactly that. It tells us the direction of steepest descent because there is a negative here. The gradient by itself just tells us the diff, tells us the direction of steepest ascent. So the gradient, so this triangle represents the gradient. The gradient of any function is just a vector of its derivatives of with respect to every parameter it is. So it's a collection of all the derivatives packaged into one neat vector. And this vector, this neat vector, we're gonna use this in our algorithm to just do it all at once, to calculate the gradient, to calculate the change the cost function. If we nudge theta in a little bit forward or backwards, or we nudge every single theta forward or backwards in some way. Geometrically speaking, the gradient actually itself is a vector field. And each of these arrows represents the direction. Actually, this isn't an actual gradient vector field. This is a different thing. But the gradient vector points in the direction of steepest ascent always. And in our case, when we have the negative, it's going to point in the direction of steepest descent. And so for this example, this vector right here, for example, uh, let's zoom in here. This vector right here could correspond on the 3D graph right here. So it could correspond in this direction right here. So this is the XY plane. So if you kind of take the XY plane and kind of move it like this, so move it in three space. So this XY plane, we then move it in, we then move it in three space where we have a Z component. Then that gradients exactly map onto the surface itself. And in our case, is a 3D surface. In the actual machine learning algorithm, it's going to be a surface of, well, it could be a, a hundred dimensional graph. We can't visualize that. That's why we need the linear algebra part. So the gradient of the cost function with respect to some theta. So this itself, if we plug this in for, let's say, theta 1, this is going to output a single vector that points in the direction of steep descent. But how do we actually get the actual ascent? How do we get the actual steepest ascent, like the slope of this? Well, what we need to do is we just need to take, since it, okay, but since this gradient is a vector itself, we need to use its components to find the actual magnitude of it. So we're gonna take the norm of it. However, if we do plug in a theta here, this gradient then means something else. It also means something called a directional derivative. So the directional derivative of the cost with theta vector being inputted. Actually, no, it's theta with, it's actually theta, some value of theta. It's not the theta vector. Fix that, boom. And so in this case, the norm of this is the gradient. And this can also be written as the gradient with the dot product of theta. So the gradient with the dot product of theta. These all mean the same thing. But in our case, we're mostly going to use the gradient of the cost function. So we're going to try to focus on this version right here. But these are just also for your purpose. This directional derivative, it's like going to the surface and Let's say picking a point on the surface, let's pick this point here. What is the slope of the tangent line in the direction of our gradient? So in this case, if, our, if we're using the gradient vector that points down here in the xy plane, what is the slope of this line? That's what the directional derivative tells. And the slope is also useful, but we care more about the norm or the magnitude of the gradient. So what is this? Well. If we remember from earlier the cost function, the cost function itself of theta, 
is uh, we're just going to use mean squared error in our case. So sum where you have output of y, output of y minus your theta dotted with x. Oops, your theta dotted with your x. And this kind of resembles y equals mx plus b, if you will, squared. And we already kind of did the same thing. We brought down the 2. And so the gradient itself, we can bring down the 2. So it's 2m. It's 2m. But since we're doing the gradient of all the vectors, the sum, the sum here kind of goes away since we're doing all the vectors at once. And we instead go, start with the x vector transposed. Uh, the transposed is because we're kind of taking it out of the, we're taking it out of the parentheses. And so we kind of need to flip it. I'll show you why we need to flip it when I show you the other ones, but it's the transpose of your input vectors it's the transpose of your input vectors. Transpose of your input. It's the transpose of your input vectors with your initial vector theta. Oh, this is actually with respect to theta. Whoops. Respect to theta. Then we dot it with your x vector. So vector times a vector is a scalar, as the dot product is. So let's then use this equation. Now, finally, back to our final gradient descent algorithm. Our current parameters of theta is going to be equal to the past parameters, the previous one, and we're going to subtract from it. We're going to subtract from it alpha, and then we're going to paste this in. Divide by x trans 2m. Actually, this goes in the parameter. So 2 divided by m times x transpose x transpose y minus theta dot. And so uh, it's a little hard to see at the end here, but this right here is our gradient descent evaluated at all of them at once. So this gives us our actual desired O time complexity at every step. So what this is doing is for a certain amount of iterations, let's say for 500 steps, it's going to keep looping through this for 500 steps. So you know you're going to use a for loop there. And this is going to give you O of 1 complexity at every run. So for n iterations, it'll give you O of 1 times n iterations. But that's a lot better. That is a lot less than O of n times n. That's a, this, is, this is a lot less. And this is what the gradient allows us to compute. And this is actually going to be useful for if we want to use stochastic gradient descent or mini batch gradient descent. This right here is technically called batch gradient descent. But the other two I could spend a whole video talking about. If you want that, tell me in the description below.